Today we are going to talk about the clinical clues to the anaerobic infections and also some lab procedures. Now the question is that why young doctors should be very much aware about the clinical clues related with the anaerobic infection. The answer is that anaerobic when anaerobic bacteria are present in some abscess or pus or in some drain, uh, suppurative draining wound if anaerobic infections are present anaerobic bacteria are present uh, definitive diagnosis by the laboratory procedure is very difficult tedious and it takes long time right to take sampling for the anaerobic bacteria and to transport the anaerobic bacteria samples and even to grow those bacteria takes long time so a definitive laboratory diagnosis might take one to two weeks right but sometimes anaerobic infection is very serious infection and you have to treat the patient empirically you right you have to start the antibodies empirically so you have to be very careful that when you are dealing with the infections right are there any clues or pointers towards the anaerobic infection so let's start with the first clue first clue which I'm going to discuss that is the diagnostic if that clue is present in your patient in the wound or in the draining pus if that clue is present that is the diagnostic point for the anaerobic bacterial presence or anaerobic infection and that diagnostic point is putrid smell right what I mean by putrid smell that if patient wound is having a putrid smell or discharge from the wound has putrid smell putrid smell mean smell like feces feculent smell very offensive smell very foul foul smell or we can say smell like rotten eggs right so these are very or smell sulfur like generally we speak that whenever a wound or from abscess or from a discharge from an infective site if it is having putrid smell it is confirmed it is diagnostic of an aerobic infections right and of course then not only you cover other organisms you will also give antibiotics specially covering the anaerobic bacteria right why I say coverage for other microbes because usually anaerobic infections are not alone in our body they are there as a mixed infection I will explain it later why anaerobic infections not only anaerobic bacteria are present with them usually facultative anaerobic bacteria or aerobic bacteria might be present is that right so when we are treating anaerobic infection right usually we have to give not only antibiotics with anaerobic coverage but we have to give antibiotics also for facultative anaerobic bacteria not only for obligate anaerobic bacteria for example when we think of the antibiotics for such patients who have anaerobic infections if you miss the point that patient has mixed infection where there are aerobic or facultative anaerobic or obligate anaerobic if you miss this point and you if you treat the patient with those antibiotics which do not cover anaerobic bacteria those antibiotics like aminoglycoside minoglycosides don't cover the anaerobic bacteria like fl fluoroquinolones they don't properly cover the anaerobic bacteria so what will happen in these patients for example if I have an infection in my arm and 
you miss the idea that there might be anaerobic infection there, right? And you treat that infection with those antibiotics which are not having anaerobic coverage, what will happen? There will be treatment failure. There will be treatment failure, right? So, it is very important for every clinician to know what are the clinical clues to the anaerobic infection. I would love to repeat it. It is worth repeating it thousand times that if you are lucky that in the infection site, at the infection site, from the abscess or from the drainage from the abscess or from the wound site, if you smell putrid smell or feculent smell or rotten egg smell or very foul smell, it is diagnostic for anaerobic infection. You have to rule out the anaerobic infection. Rather, I would say, whatever antibiotics you are going to start, you must give, include those antibiotics which have anaerobic coverage. But, the game of, like, like the game of life, catching the anaerobic infection is not that easy. It has its own twist and turn. From the beginning of this lecture, it seems very easy that you just smell the portrait smell, right? And you say this is anaerobic infection. But with this diagnostic point, there are some issues, right? Portrait smell has one very positive point. What is the very positive point? The plus of portrait smell is that it is diagnostic. If it is present, if you can detect it or if it is present, you can smell it or it is present. But the problem is, there are two very important issues, right? Number one issue. This putrid smell is not an early feature of anaerobic infection. In many patients, it develops very late. It develops very late, but we need to treat the patient earlier. It means if there is not putrid smell, it does not mean, right? It does not mean that anaerobic infection is ruled out. Secondly, another issue, number one, it develops late, right? Secondly, more sorrowful situation is, more sad situation is that such an important diag diagnostic point, putrid smell develops only in, only in present, only, yes, only in 30 to 30% to 50% of the patients. What does it mean? that more than 50% patient who have anaerobic infection, they might never develop even portrait smell, right? So it means that when we are going to clinically diagnose or suspect anaerobic infection in a wound, right, we should have more clues even though Portrait smell is a very important clinical clue to the anaerobic infection and even though if it is present, it is considered diagnostic. But the problem is that it is present only in about 30 to 50 percent of the patient. It is present only in 30 to 50 percent of the patient and even if it is present, it might, it will develop very late. We need to diagnose it earlier before even this putrid smell develops. If you are diagnosing in a patient when there's a lot of putrid smell, it means case is already getting late in management. And secondly, in about 50, more than 50% of the patient with definitive anaerobic infection, putrid smell is absent. What does it mean? That presence of putrid smell confirms that, what is that? 
anaerobic microbes are involved anaerobic infection is there but absence of putrid smell does not rule out does not rule out the presence of anaerobic infection so it is very important to remember that due to this reason that many patient who have the anaerobic infection but putrid smell may not be smelled either problem with our nose or problem with the development of the volatile compounds which produce the putrid smell so in that cases we can say that in absence of absence of putrid smell we cannot rule out we cannot rule out yes anaerobic and aerobic infection so what does it mean that if you are lucky you find the putrid smell but if you are not lucky then you have to look for other features other features by which you can suspect the presence of anaerobic infection so that you can start the treatment earlier before the definitive laboratory diagnosis is available which takes usually longer time